Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. This is the largest and most heavily armed gunship in the world, the Lockheed AC-130. A heavily modified version of the C-130 Hercules transport aircraft, there's hardly a single part of the plane's 100 feet of fuselage that doesn't feature a weapon of some sort. Nicknamed the Angel of Death, the AC-130 can be equipped with a staggering array of cannons and machine guns, including a 105mm M102 howitzer, a 40mm Bofors cannon, and a 25mm GAU-12 equalizer, a five-barrel Gatling-style cannon. There is also room for missiles, rocket pods, and even GBU-39 small-diameter bombs, which makes the AC-130 a formidable opponent for enemy troops and vehicles on the ground. On the other hand, it often proves a literal lifesaver for Allied soldiers who need close air support. The AC-130's armament is variable, which allows it to be optimized for every mission. Whether the aircraft is required to support ground troops, escort a vehicle convoy, or provide air support during a battle, the goal is to ensure its weaponry can engage various targets, including armored vehicles, buildings, and fortifications. Weapons load crews are responsible for loading and maintaining the weapon systems of any aircraft. This means loading and unloading bombs, missiles, ammunition for guns, and any other types of ordnance the aircraft may carry. Because the AC-130 carries so many different weapons, this is often a very lengthy process. This is especially true of the howitzer, which has shells around 2 feet long and 100 pounds each. These and other shells are stored in secure ammunition racks to keep them from rolling around during flight. One of the most important aspects of operating a C-130 is the pre-flight check. Typically, the air crews will perform this check while ground crews are refueling and prepping the plane for takeoff. The AC-130, like many modern military aircraft, incorporates advanced digital systems and electronics. Pre-flight checks involve a series of systematic procedures to ensure all these systems function correctly before a mission. The crews will first initiate the aircraft's onboard computers and run diagnostic checks. This includes checking navigation systems, communication systems, and weapon control systems. Next, they'll evaluate the sensor and surveillance equipment, the weapon systems, and the flight control systems. Other important features to be evaluated during this time are communication systems, nav equipment, and electronic countermeasures. AC-130s generally carry a complement of eight, all of whom are assigned to specific duties during pre-flight, flight, and battle. Coordination, especially during periods of high stress, is extremely important Despite its size, the AC-130 is quite nimble in the air. It has a maximum takeoff weight of around 155,000 pounds and a top speed of over 416 miles per hour. Though its service ceiling is listed as 39,000 feet, 
the aircraft generally stays closer to the ground, where it can provide much needed heavy weapon support for troops. Once airborne, the AC-130 is a threat to enemies in the air, sea, and on the ground. Its incredible versatility and weapons options allow it to engage and destroy virtually any target. A typical AC-130 mission will feature two pilots and two combat systems officers in the cockpit. Of course, the primary role of the pilots is to fly the aircraft. Given the nature of the AC-130's missions, these men and women often have to maneuver the plane under challenging conditions, including low altitude flight and in heavy combat zones. CSOs are responsible for operating the AC-130's weapon systems. This includes targeting and firing the guns, cannons and missiles, which often includes tactical coordination with the special flight officers in the back. Since certain guns like the howitzer cannot be fired remotely, these crew members are responsible for operating this and other heavy weapons. AC-130 air crews often conduct live fire training missions to ensure maximum readiness. This gives crew members valuable experience with the weapons and other systems, ensuring they can perform properly in real-life scenarios. Crews are trained not only in firing the weapons, but also in inspecting and maintaining them. The more they know about the various systems under their control, the more likely they'll be to handle any situation that comes their way. One of the most important things to be practiced here is aiming coordination. This is where two or more crew members collaborate on the operation of a weapon to maximize both efficiency and accuracy. The AC-130 is essentially designed to rain bullets, rockets, and cannon shells down onto targets below. However, with the proper aiming coordination, the crews can ensure they strike the intended targets, regardless of whether they're mobile, stationary, or airborne. Though air crews work very hard to ensure the AC-130 is effective in its role, maintenance crews are equally dedicated to making sure the plane itself can perform as intended. This includes regular checks and servicing, which are carried out at specific intervals, such as daily, weekly, or monthly. This routine maintenance ensures that all systems function correctly and helps identify potential issues before they become serious. Since the AC-130 has a number of very sophisticated systems, specialized repair and inspecting crews are assigned to things like armaments, sensors, and avionics. Regular physical inspections are also carried out to ensure the structural integrity of the aircraft. This includes checking for any damage to the airframe, wear and tear, and ensuring that all structural components are in good condition, 
especially right before and after a mission. In 2020, three of the very last AC-130U Spooky models from the 4th Special Operations Squadron were retired. This event culminated in a special flyover at Hurlburt Field in Florida. These specialized gunships had served for more than 25 years, and their ability to retire safely after all of that time is a testament to the men and women who flew them, as well as to those who maintained them. The C-130 has been serving the U.S. military since 1956, nearly as long as another large aircraft, the Boeing B-52 Stratofortress. The B-52 is a long-range subsonic strategic bomber and in its time was one of the most formidable weapons of war ever crafted. At 159 feet long and with its 185-foot wingspan, the B-52 could carry up to 70,000 pounds of ordnance and bombs across nearly 9,000 miles. It served extensively in Vietnam and in the conflicts in the Middle East and may end up being the first U.S. aircraft to serve for more than 100 years. As a Cold War aircraft, the B-52 was intended to respond quickly in the event of a nuclear attack. This meant that several fully loaded planes were often kept at the ready at air bases worldwide. If something were to happen, it would be imperative that both the aircraft and its crews would be able to respond at a moment's notice. Known as a scramble in military aviation terms, it refers to the process of being on high alert for a given period of time. The quick reaction capability of the B-52 was seen as a significant deterrent against potential adversaries and ensured that the bomber force was always ready to engage in a variety of missions. To this day, regular drills and exercises are conducted to maintain the readiness and efficiency of the scramble process. Unfortunately, one major problem was holding the B-52 back from being an effective first response aircraft. Specifically, its engines could take up to an hour to warm up properly. In order to bypass this problem, Stratofortress engineers came up with a system known as the cart start. The cart start utilizes small explosive cartridges that can be attached to the aircraft's turbines. Once ignited, the engines immediately begin to start spinning. After the engines achieve self-sustaining combustion and reach idle speed, the aircraft can operate under its power, typically in under 10 minutes. Though the B-52 was projected to fly until at least 2050, many models still feature an analog cockpit. This is yet another strategic design on behalf of the United States military. For instance, analog systems are generally less susceptible to certain forms of electronic warfare, such as hacking or cyber attacks. In the digital age, where cyber warfare capabilities are a significant concern, the analog nature of the B-52 systems could offer an extra layer of protection against digital intrusions. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it.
Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.